confession to make. Even though I live only three minutes walk from the South Downs, until the coronavirus lockdown, I've never actually walked there. Now, I've driven to other parts of the South Downs, but I've never actually walked to the very place that's on our doorstep. But since the coronavirus lockdown, part of my exercise is to walk to that very place. And I think enjoying the simple things in life is something that we should do, especially if we are confused and worried and concerned about the future. There's a book in the Bible that was written 3,000 years ago, but it could easily have been written yesterday. It has things like, there's a time and place for everything, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. We're obviously at the moment at a time to refrain from embracing. The writer to, of Ecclesiastes, uh, which you can find in the Old Testament, has chapter after chapter of looking at life and not liking what he finds. It can be quite quite depressing reading, to be honest. Uh, and he makes four important points. Firstly, time marches on. Secondly, death comes to us all. Thirdly, life's random nature. He says things like, the race is not always won by the swift or the battle won by the strongest, nor does food always come to the wise or wealth to the intelligent or success to the skillful, but time and chance happen to them all. And the fourth thing he says, um, in some translations it says life is meaningless, but it's not that life is meaningless, it's as if life's purpose is obscured by a fog or a mist or smoke or something like that. And that can be very disorientating, uncomfortable and confusing. If you've ever been in a smoke-filled place and trying to find your way or trying to find your way in fog, it can be very difficult. And chapter after chapter of Ecclesiastes looks at these things. Surprisingly, he comes up with an unusual conclusion. What he's saying is just because you can't predict what will happen and sometimes life's purposes are like in smoke and you can't see them, that's no reason not to live a good life. Pursue wisdom, he says, and also start enjoying the simple pleasures in life, which is what I said at the beginning. This is what it says. Seize life. Eat bread with gusto. Drink wine with a robust heart. Oh yes, God takes pleasure in your pleasure. Dress festively every morning. Don't skimp on colours and scarves. Relish life with the spouse you love each and every day of your precarious life. Each day is God's gift. It's all you get in exchange for the hard work of staying alive. Make the most of each one. Whatever turns up, grab it and do it heartily. When you're young, make the most of your youth. Relish your youthful vigour. Follow the impulses of your heart. If something looks good to you, pursue it. You won't be young forever. Youth lasts about as long as vapour. However, be careful what you choose, because you have to answer to God for every last bit of it. So, you can't control life? Don't try. Instead, pursue wisdom and look for the simple pleasures in life. And that is the surprising conclusion to Ecclesiastes. He wants you to understand that life has, still has meaning if you, even if you can't grasp it or see it. The proper response is, without God there is no clarity of purpose. There is no point to life. There is just futile pursuits. He concludes by saying, fear God and do what he tells you. Or, if you prefer, Life is short, better enjoy it. Eternity is long, better prepare for it. Mm -hmm.